Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to Phil Chills Gaming. I am Phil, of course. Today we got a real good video for y'all. We're going to be looking and talking about Season 8 of Smite. Uh, it's uh, the new battle pass, new gods, new skins, new mechanics, new maps. I'm talking the whole shebang. It's going to be a wild ride and I'm glad y'all are here for us. Uh, today we're gonna have of course the Randalorian Randy with us We're gonna be just kind of going through a general Discussion of what y'all have to expect with the new pass uh, Hopefully give y'all kind of a general rundown on it. There is a lot. I'm gonna warn y'all There is a lot a lot a lot of stuff. They're gonna be doing this year uh, with this new with the new season We're gonna kind of break this down into a couple videos uh, This one is gonna be more of a general overview. It's gonna talk about the, the big picture changes it's kind of kind of we're going to kind of go into a few of the items few of the god changes talk about skins it's going to be a big a broad picture of it second video we're going to have for you is a breakdown of all of the new items in depth and especially the starter items so they're going to major changes this year with how starter items work i'm not going to get too much into it right now because there's a whole video devoted to that but uh y'all stay tuned and y'all come back and we're going to talk about it then so let's get into it. Uh, right now we have Randy. Let's go talk to him. Randy, what's up, man? How you doing? Welcome back. What up? We're going to be talking about uh, Season 8. We're going to go through the update notes. This is going to be a real general overview video. We will, we will have another video coming out, not too distant future, probably within a day of the release of this video, that we're going to go into a little more detail of some of these um, item changes, kind of give you all a little bit of a tactical look at it so you all can hopefully uh, use them. Uh, you know, kind of get the leg up on the competition. So, yes, uh, Season 8 comes out on January 26th. January 26th is going to drop the Most Wanted Battle Pass, the new Battle Pass. It's going to drop uh, Season Pass 2021 for everybody that buys that. The whole year's worth of stuff is all kinds of goodies that comes with. And the Dawn of Babylon event, which is kind of the big deal. That's kind of the point of this. Babylon is the theme of this. All the two gods that have been announced are both Babylonian. We have Tiamat and we have Gilgamesh. Actually, Gilgamesh is... Gilgamesh is Babylonian, right? Yeah. Uh, I know it's Mesopotamian, yeah, but I believe it's the same... Uh... Yeah, I think he's gonna be, he should be as part of the same pantheon. Okay, cool. Uh, either way, Tiamat and Gilgamesh are the ones that have been announced. Tiamat is the one that is going to be coming out with the new season. She is a giant dragon god. That's how I'm going to describe her. Uh, not too much is really known about Tiamat. So far, we've seen that really awesome video that came out. Smite does this great job of just putting out lately... I mean, I, I've seen some of the older videos. Like, this one was just... I mean, did you, did you watch the video, Randy? Did you see this thing? I saw part of it. I, I know I watched part of it, and I think my kids interrupt me in the middle of it. But yeah, I saw, I've seen most of what you're talking about. Uh, they just... This epic battle scene. Um, Tiamat, this, she's huge. Uh, this huge dragon. The thing is, is not too much is really known about her right now. We, we're not even sure what class she's going to be. A couple of things that have been announced through her is uh one she's a stance god so whatever class she is there are theories beyond that class uh, as of right now as of the recording of this video we're not exactly sure what class she is so maybe by the time the video comes out it'll be kind of leaked but as of now it's it's not known the only things we know is that there are two stances that are going to be known with her she has a flight stance where she's kind of up in the air she and she has a bruiser stance where she's kind of like crawling around like a dragon she uses celestial magic so she will be a magic magical properties that kind of limits her to mage or guardian and she creates kind of clones of herself uh so that could be distractions those could be kind of like in the same vein of like kazimbo there there's a old band like honestly they could release her as either mage or guardian and it would make sense just because of kind of her uh background like kind of what, what what she even looks like how much bigger she is compared to these other gods the other god announcement was uh gilgamesh he's the uh he's uh, he's in that intro video he'll be coming out a little bit later i think he comes out uh the 8.2 patch yeah, either way I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to be a warrior. He's a big dude. With I was going to say, he's he's like the Babylonian Hercules. Yeah. I, he's I, not I, actually a god. Gilgamesh was like a, a man. and so He, he was the first like, hero. Like he's the, I think yeah. he's the oldest hero that we know that's like recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm, I'm with you. I think, I think we can count on him being a warrior or if somehow they work it into Hunter, maybe that depends on if he has a weapon, but I mean, I'd have to go back and look at the video and take a look at him. Usually they reveal his weapon whenever he's, he's up, he, whenever they come out. Huge sword. 
He, I mean, I'd be, uh, he's a warrior. Yeah, <laughs> he's a huge. So I'd, I'd be honestly shocked if he wasn't a uh, a warrior just just by how he looks. New maybe modern. an assassin, maybe. But they, I mean, I feel like they they're missing a, ma a new mage and a new uh, a, a new mage, a new warrior. Kind of if they're gonna keep with how they release guys, they they've already come out with a new yeah. hunter. They already have a new guardian, um, new assassin. Like I feel like I mean, that's kind of the even thing the high that's... res. He, he's going to be a war, he's going to be a guy who chucks swords at you. He's an ABC, <laughs> right? He's just going to yeah, exactly. No, that's I can see it. I can see it. All right, but uh, that's kind of the big news here. That's going to be and, and there's not a whole lot of information on these guys other than what they look like and that small what I've gave you. So we're kind of go we're going to go into what we actually know, and that is the actual patch that comes out on the 21st. Uh, let's kind of get it. Oh, 26, 26. I was going to say, 26, do you mean? Yeah, 26. Let's get into it. Um, first, I, uh, I was going to say, I, I think it's probably best we just skip the skins this time. There's a whole bunch of them. There's so many of them, and I'll just say this. There's not a bad one. This is the first time that I can say I believe that I, I, there, there's not a bad four, one. Four, 14 skins. So many. Uh, there's so many. Uh, one of them is the Season 8 Rank Rewards, the Janus skin, so that's not going to be one you could buy. Right. And your heart Ganesh. That's the season seven combination reward for all you guys who, who, who kept from getting banned or deserter the whole season. <laughs> right. And kept a goodwill up. You'll get that. Grand Magus Anubis. I think he's going to be the limited skin that comes with uh, the season pass. If you buy that, which I always buy the season pass. Yep. Got a new Hunbat skin, which Hunbats is finally getting to love. Uh, uh, this this emoji skin is going to be. I, I can't wait to see, like, as anyone that's watched these videos before, um, I'm really big on what the abilities look like. I think this Emoja skin, Emoja has, like, a lot of room for really cool-looking abilities. Uh, Amir finally has her another angelic, one that I'm into. I was going to say, Emoja's angelic skin, I really like that, yeah. just for the pure fact, when you put up her ult, it's like the clouds and stuff, and it just, it, yeah. like, they did a really good job on that. And same thing, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, like, the walls and stuff that this walking blight Ymir puts up. Exactly. I'm not going to lie. I don't play Baba Yaga, but I'm interested to see what they do with the Baba Yaga skin with her. I, like, I, like what, like what's going to be following her around this time? That's what I'm about to say. I can't wait. It's going to be the house is going to be crazy. I can just, like, some type of mad castle, like Frankensteinish castle or something along those lanes. Or just maybe they'll go pure science and make it some sort of, like, I don't know, mech or something. Some kind of science-y, uh... Something along that nature. I'm not exactly sure where they're going to go with and, this. And uh, it looks like the new Wasp skin is going to be probably the season pass. What's this? Dawn of Babylon. Yeah, Dawn of Babylon is the actual, uh, the event, so. Oh, got, yeah, yeah, so the Dawn of Babylon, so new Wasp is going to be the Dawn of Babylon. So these are all Dawn of Babylon, and then uh, uh, Afro, Kali, Yamoja, and Pele are going to be the uh, battle pass. Yeah. There's a lot to like here. There's just yeah, so uh, an overall. Check that. Make sure you guys, like, log onto the site. SmiteGame.com, go under news and the uh, update, season eight updates, and uh, look at the full list. Like I said, there's 14 skins, and we sit here and talk about every single one in length. It'll yeah. be a video unto itself. Yeah, there's, and then there's a lot more that are planned and announced that we'll kind of touch on in the end and just kind of tell you all about it, but there's a whole lot that you can talk about. But season eight is, uh, that's like, the skins are by far the most mundane thing about season eight because, man, I feel like a whole new game is coming. First off, there's a kind of be a new tutorial system, new UI type of thing happening. Um, there are going to be role guides that uh, detects like your role in the lobby. Um, you're going to be able. That's going to kind of give you guides that make sense. Well, that Smite says makes sense. Not that I think anyone is going to follow this, because God knows you're going to see still see Thor in the solo. Like it's 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 going to be things, but um, you're going to be they're going to do a couple of things, kind of quality of life things where. Uh, they're gonna go more into the tutorials where they have like the the jungle is gonna have more of a guide that kind of tells you what the hell to do. I would think that's gonna be the big thing, not so much telling you what guys to play, but um, from what they say here, like uh, throughout the, it's actually part of the match PvP or co-op. Uh, it guides you through um, it guides you through your starting jungle camp to your lane. It helps notify you when stuff respawning. It highlights jungle boxes and towers as the game progresses. So for those new players. Let's be honest. Like we all love Smite, but if we're all being honest, nobody likes playing Conquest the first couple of times because it gets so toxic whenever somebody messes up, right? Right. 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 So it's nice when the game helps. And because God forbid, nobody wants to ask the question like, "Where am I supposed to be?" <laughs> yeah, about where they're supposed to be at, right? When can I? When do I get this buff? Do I touch this buff? Uh, I feel like what High Res is trying to do is if you if you don't have a friend that explains this game to you or if you're not going to go watch all these tutorial videos like these youtube videos 
you have no idea what the hell is going on um there's just so much this game items where you're supposed to be who do you play as what counters what uh this feel like i feel like what you what high res is trying to do is is to help new players um there's gonna be uh there, there's a whole new ui system in the menu where you can toggle on and off auto purchases you can auto skill up but you can filter by classes like there's just they're making it so that the game isn't so overwhelming right off the jump uh, that's that's kind of where i think they're going with this and I, I really like the changes i agree 100 percent. it's uh if you especially if you've never played a moba right if right. you just played regular story driven games or multiplayer shooting up games you play this type of game the gameplay is entirely different because of the lanes and the roles and things like that and as a new player that could be super overwhelming because i mean it's hard enough trying to remember what your god does, let alone trying to, you know, remembering, oh yeah, jungle camp. If you know right. what the jungle camp does or understanding the XP, you know, that you have to farm XP and then understanding which items to buy and what item counter, you know, or if you have to, like you said, buy a different item to counter somebody because they're giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. uh, this right here should just make everything a lot smoother. Well, not smoother, what's the word I'm looking for? Intuitive, more intuitive for new players as it kind of holds their hand a little bit at the beginning. Uh, because per the the notes here, um, that that guide, uh, the tutorial system should be on automatically for players under level 15, mm -hmm. and it's going to be off by default for players over level 16. But you can toggle it back on if you want to use it. Uh, there also will be role trading in match lobby, uh, probably so that you're not getting you know solo lane tutorial on a uh, on a mid when you're when you swap somebody for mid. Uh, they, they'll give you a, a recommended guide selection, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, like I said, this is more geared towards the, uh, the, the, the newer players, but I feel like, like you said, this is something that, that, that needed to happen. I'm surprised it honestly took this long to happen. Um, and in that same vein, uh, Ranked is getting kind of a, 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 work, a rework. Um, they're doing a hard reset on all players in MMR. Uh, they're removing the variant system they use. They're removing a maximum. They're, they're adding a maximum MMR adjustment. Um, I think what they're trying to do is those people that are just so high up in the elite class. They're trying to make sure that they're still high up in the elite class because, uh, and they're trying to allow some of these people to kind of breach in. Because I don't know how many games that you play with a ranked system. I don't know. Uh, I know I, I don't really mess with the ranks too much, uh, mostly because I just don't have a team to do it with. Uh, but if you started the bottom and ranked of any video game i don't care what the game is it is so incredibly hard to crawl your way out the to just to get out the top of it get back out of the uh, the bottom the, the the dredges that i feel that every once in a while i really like when games do this when they take a look at their mmr system and they just do a hard reset okay everybody let's see where you really sit now you know some people if they're they might be sitting at the at a bottom at a bronze rank and they're really much higher they just don't you know you lose one game and you you, you, you got to win three to make up for it in a lot of games yeah it's uh you got a new season uh, and usually they do mmr stuff resets and stuff with new seasons come out and i think this is like you know for those people i'm thinking maybe they're trying to make it so that that you don't have to be quite as hardcore to still right. play and be competitive right because right. like you said like you people grind out and i mean if you've got time to sit there and play rank all the time it's great but you know some people have families, you know, jobs and stuff that take away a lot of their gaming time. And maybe they want to do a couple ranked matches, but but they start playing and they can only play one or two. And if they only win one, they lose one. That can have a huge effect on your MMR. Or losing one, one match, the one doesn't offset the, the loss. So right. I'm hoping these MMR changes make it so that it's more reliable. You can look at the MMR, it's more reliable. But it's also, like you said, it, it makes it easier for people who play ranked to sit there and place well and not necessarily uh have to grind quite as much i just hope to make it more competitive in that top in that top bracket i just hope they make it make sense i just like my always my biggest problem with ranked okay i know i want to be whatever a goal player like what the hell do i have to do to get there do i have to win 57 games like what that's that's always my biggest issue with ranked is it's just you lose one and you'll drop three spots you you win seven and you barely, you barely move up that's that's just kind of that's that's just a general complaint it has nothing to do with smite that's just always yeah my, but, uh, now that's my always issue. aggravating in any game when like you said whenever one loss affects your placing so drastically but then you have like a hot streak and you win five and you gain back maybe one place yeah you, you maybe maybe you're a little higher than you were from your losses next moving on this is one of the biggest things that i believe 
uh, is coming to this season is they're gonna they're completely changing how healing works in the video game. There's gonna be something called a global anti-healing aura, which sits over every map, all game modes. Uh, but essentially, what this means is if you are not considered brawling, and what brawling by definition of Smite is is if you have done damage or done a, some form of crowd control to an enemy guy within the past four seconds. If you're not considered brawling, you automatically get a 30% reduction on um, any type, any type of a uh, healing ability, life steal, uh, you know, any any type of heal of that nature. Uh, what I think that this is doing is basically making it so, uh, like I, we all seen, you know, you're in the mid lane and Anubis comes in, you fight him, fight him, fight him, fight him, fight him, and you get him down to one stick, and he runs two seconds in the jungle, drops his circle on a jungle mob. And then comes right back at full health. I think that they're trying to make it so that life steal is viable, but you have to life steal in a fight. You're not just gonna go run to a random lane minion and refill your health. Feel oh, like yeah. that's a big part watching of this. Anubis like like spray a line of minions and just go to full health in like two to three seconds is so demoralizing when you sat there and you fought your butt off to get them down as that low. Yeah, hoping to maybe push him out of lane and make him back if you don't get the kill. But then it's like, like you said, boop, 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 he's back up. So, yeah, that global anti healing aura will be good. Um, that, um, and like I said, they call it brawling. I'm going to call it out of combat because it's just easier. Right. With that in mind, they are they're changing almost every anti heal and healing item to kind of make kind of adjust for this. All of anti heal items are taking some sort of nerf all healing items are taking some sort of buff what i think that the point of this is is so that you are using lifesteal and heals tactically like they want lifesteal to matter in the fight they don't want lifesteal to matter whenever you're fighting a, a jungle mob they want lifesteal to happen they want that they want you to have to be tactical with your lifesteal one on one with an enemy player or in like an actual team fight. I I'm interested to see how this this plays out in like your in your joust and your other things where the ADCs were using life steals to carry like the bull minion. Right. Like, yeah. So with the reduced healing, I wonder how much of a that that that's going to turn that back into that has to be a team fight now because they won't be able to heal through it. I think that's a great point. I didn't even thought about that. I like that. I like that a lot. If that's the case, because I mean, you know, the, if you get a good a good assassin with life steal on him, they can go tank the bull at level 12 and that's yeah, kind exactly. of not the purpose of it you're supposed yeah. to be it's supposed to be a team fight I, I like i said uh like i said all these items are getting nerfs buffs uh i really think that it's going to bring more of life steal like more of a you can be a little more tactical now um before you literally your life steal was i mean it, it helped you in your team fights it was kind of relevant but i mean to be real it was mostly so you can just stay in the lane forever i mean think about uh, assault i mean if you're in a, if you're a, uh, an adc you just you grab life steal immediately and you just never you know you're, you're constantly at full health i kind of think that this is going to have a pretty decent effect on that in my opinion yeah agreed i think honestly uh i'm just thinking about the list of gods this is going to affect the most obviously your your healer centric mages right mm -hmm. obviously this is a big boon for them yes because then they can you know your changas your afros their heals are going to probably feel better in the fight you right feel like you're at, they're actually sustaining the fight but then uh, I think on the flip side, you know, other gods that have healing abilities, such as Oleron, Cupid, and all that stuff, that's going to keep them from doing the poke he poke pullback heal that you see in a lot of stuff. Right. Because, uh, I mean, Cupid's heal can be huge early game. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, like if he does it with full hearts, they go back and bing, 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 and then like, especially in that, if your support's getting low and he fills back up, it's like feel like you did nothing to them, and all he did was drop one ability. Yeah, yeah, no, they're uh, they're they're definitely it's it's gonna take a lot of these poke guys out of he of the healing equation. I mean, it's still gonna be it's a thirty percent reduction, so it's still gonna be something you can do, but you're gonna have to actually sit there. Like, like with Cupid, like you're not going to drop three hearts it's, and heal. You're going to have to drop maybe nine. <laughs> like it's going to yeah, be a difference. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to make you think about your uh, about your, your mana conservation. You, can, you can't just spam the heal and then get back in the fight. Or you're not going to have any mana to do anything else. And I, I really, and I brought up Afro and all these, I'm really curious to see like if a healer becomes a, a role that's like, you know, that fifth option. Like if you... Like right now, the the general comps that you see is uh, two mages, an ADC, a warrior, or an ADC and a a, a assassin and a guardian. Um, I'm curious if like 
healer is going to take a spot and like okay we have a damage mage and like a healer and that's going to become like a real dominant comp with i mean like these these healing item buffs are, are not insignificant and caduceus to shield uh, like i said i'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty excited to see where this goes um next major change uh <laughs> huge change is uh conquest is getting an entirely redone map um they are it's going to be a babylonian theme map um, the uh, the light side is going to be just kind of a redone Olympus. The dark side is going to be done in uh, Tiamat's uh, palace, like this Babylonian, real, real cool, uh, real, real interesting map. Um, it's bigger than the old one. Uh, actually, it's much bigger than the old one. So I think that with this, um, movement speed is going to become very prevalent. Uh, there are new, completely new layouts. There are new jungle mobs in it. Um, there are scorpions that uh, there's lesser scorpions, greater scorpions. The they'll they put these jungle mobs actually in the duo lane, in the solo lane, uh, where just they're just kind of XP mods for the lesser scorpions. The greater scorpions actually sit with the fire giant and with the uh, um, the, uh, the, the uh, gold fury. Oh, yeah, and, but yeah, before the Gold Fury and the Fire Giant come out, they'll be they'll be in there. And in order to upgrade them, you have to defeat. There'll be mobs to defeat in these uh, lanes, and there'll be there'll be stronger mobs. So if you want the the Fire Giant to upgrade and give you more of a buff, you want the Gold Fury to upgrade and give you the more more gold. You're gonna have to defeat these new mobs in here. Um, it's just kind of a new mechanic. I, I think it's really cool. The towers are getting a completely new redesign. They look, they, they just look different. They look better. They're cleaner. The jungle is going to be much bigger. It's going to be kind of more expansive where the jungler has a, has a little bit more room for ambushes. There's another thing they're adding, which is there's going to be doors out of the fountain leading into the jungle that from you, they open from the inside. You stand on this little, this little lever and it'll open the jungle it'll open the door and uh, the jungler or whoever can just get right out into the jungle these doors do not are not specific to certain teams though so you're able to blink through them you're able to jump through them if you have a god that has that ability like a cerberus or whatnot and you can open the enemy's doors from the jungle and kind of use that in more of a tactical advantage use that as kind of an ambush technique uh, there is a little bit of a nerf of, of that if you if the enemy stands on your door, it, it takes like a few more seconds, but it's not in like anything super significant. Uh, but it is kind of a, a new layout, a new a new design, a kind of a little twist they throw in there. Um, new art sets, like just everything is just gonna look better. I don't know if you've seen the new map. I've kind of done a couple, of, I watched a few of the reveals on it. Uh, it. It looks really good. Like it is. It's going to be interesting. They, they usually do. High res usually does a pretty good job on, when they do the remodels. Like, I remember when they talked about changing the Joust map, I was like, no. And then I saw how pretty it looked. I'm like, okay, this is this looks nice. I like it. And so, so yeah. And they're even talking about, I mean, the other big thing was is that the, the Conquest map is going to change again. Yeah, they got, what, two or three more, yeah, more two, changes? There are going to be three the complete, three redesigns throughout the uh, season. That I don't I don't know if I don't think they'll be redesigns, but they're going to be additions. They're going to be new new the thing, things added into the map. Things just a little more. Uh, but that's but I mean that's big. The the the, the schedule changes mid season like that. So yeah. that'll be interesting to see how that changes the uh, the rank dynamic and how how people play the map depending on what they add. So I mean I mean I'm I'm excited to see it. Next we talk about possibly biggest thing that is going to be changing about this season. Um, there's the their starter items now full disclosure We're not gonna get too deep into it on this particular video Because we could probably talk for two hours on starter items because there are that many changes to them and things about them um, We are gonna kind of go on a like a general overview about it. They are getting away with Blessings blessings are gone um, Now you will be able to pick a starter item. You better pick a one starter item from each role hunter warrior mage, jungle support and uh neutral there's a neutral so there's a neutral role uh, a neutral item you'll be able to pick basically there's three starter items for each of these each of these roles okay there is a standard item for each role um there is a aggressive item for almost all roles except for hunter um, and then each one has kind of something in particular to them. Hunter has standard items. 
that a standard item that'll give it a certain ability, a farming item that's made more for minion carry, and a utility item that has kind of a unique effect to it. Warrior has your standard, which is kind of your general a protection item if you're more want to be more uh, tanky, and an aggressive item if you're trying to just jump on people. So, uh, you know, kind of a go from there. Uh, mage standard item, which just has its own effect. Cooldown because that's kind of a thing with mages, and uh, aggressive item. Uh, jungle is a standard and attack speed and a more aggressive uh, support which is my personal favorite items on here has a standard a tactical item and then an aggressive item um, we can we're not going to really go into what those are uh, because like I said we'll have a video that will come out shortly beyond this about it but this is going to be uh, the, the things they're going to do is you can pick you pick your starter item and they have a certain effect right and then each of these starter items can be evolved and purchased at most of them at level 20 there's a few of them that's not level 20 but most of them when you reach level 20 you'll be able to evolve it into one of two items and both of those have completely unique effects so essentially they're releasing i mean what we got uh five 15, 15 16 15 16 items 16 items that both evolve into two into two unique items the so 32 different options and all of them in my opinion are viable like it what this does to me is eliminates the need for like basically now you're deciding on five items because like like these starter items are no joke like these are like <laughs> these these things each can be used depending on your play style very tactically i mean this is this is so exciting this is going to be completely new to my this is like a whole new and, game and i think the biggest thing is now is once you pick that item you can't, that that's it it's yeah. like the, it's like when you pick your relic at the beginning of the game once you leave the fountain that's your item that's your item you can't get rid of it so it's not you can't the one thing with the blessings was that you could buy any blessing you want to go back out swap it out for another one but also this keeps these roles specific i don't know how they'll enforce that in like arena and stuff like that maybe you have to choose a role at the beginning or you just choose your item but it keeps you in from picking this and then i think there's certain ones that you that warrior like physical uh characters can't choose and there's certain ones that magical characters can't choose because they give magical power and physical power rather than both right they'll they'll allow you to choose any item you can pick any you can pick any one you just can't pick anyone that benefits you um if it's a physical benefit or a magical like that's that's where they're big that's where the line is drawn on there um so like if you are a, a jungle well actually uh jungle uh jungle is only going to be in conquest they've taken the jungle items out uh, of the, the other moves. And which is another good change i think because that pin item, starter item, yeah. is to me was just a little bit too good in like arena and stuff. That's just a little bit too much oomph early game. And it's gonna be, and these new ones are gonna be even better. So like, I uh, <laughs> like this right here is you have to think about your play style. You have to think about the god you're picking in order to really maximize the benefits from these. But if you, those players that really go deep dive into their builds, look at these starter items. Go, I'm gonna do this, 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 like. This is going to be such a benefit. I'm not. A, I'm not really one that gets blessings. Most of the time, the blessing really is not worth it, depending on like the god I'm playing. I just want to jump straight into getting that. That first, usually that getting that first level item, like that first item, like completed quicker, is more of a benefit than the blessing, in my opinion. That's just how I play, and I feel like now, like I'm never. I'm always going to have a blessing or, or, or a starter item. Like these things are just too good. They're they're too effective. Uh, like I said, we're going to kind of go into why those are they're too effective and we're going to give you all a real good view over this. But for now, just let's just go like it's it's there. This is going to be a big change in the game. This is going to be a big I think everyone's going to use them. The uh, the potions, they're like the elixir power, elixir defense. Uh, those are getting changes where they like right now, all they do is like survive you through death. They're the exact same thing as the weaker, the 500 uh, version of it there. They just last longer. Um, now the elixir power is going to add 10% penetration. The elixir defense is going to give you 5% damage mitt and 20% crowd control reduction. That's so, so good. Yeah, like now it like like before I would just spend the 500 every time, like whatever, dude. Like I'm not, I'm not dying that much, so what does it matter? And now it's going to be you're going to want to save up that money to get these if you go to that point, especially like in game, uh, in game conquest where the game the, the matches last in 40 minutes, like. These are yeah, going to make Yeah, differences. I was going to say, th those, those are going to be big for your team battles and when more people have, like, plus 10% pin, because maybe that max is, you know, you could actually consider this when you do your build. Like, I don't have max crowd control, but I'm going to buy the elixir, and that's going to max out my crowd control. 
But also the other big thing is uh, that Shield of Thorns. They're they're nerfing it again. Yeah, I, people think it's too powerful. When used correctly, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, and uh, they just they trying to bring it down and more and more. I uh, I didn't really feel like it was broken. But I mean, you know, take the nerf, see what it does. Uh, it's gonna go down from forty to thirty percent. Uh, damage cap is gonna go down to uh, level one hundred and twenty. Like it's it, times. It's it's okay. Like see what I, it does. I don't, I don't think I, I it's don't gonna, gonna affect it much. Enough. Yeah, I don't use it enough to have an opinion on it. Honestly, it's never scared me. <laughs> yeah, like I use it, but it's like one of those things that like you use it when you're getting like quad teamed just to get them to try to back off for a second. Or you use it kind of to troll people. Like, if you get about to get hit by Cuckoo and he's almost dead, and you just stand in his circle as a tank with that on and you let him kill himself, that's funny. But other than that, <laughs> like, it is it is what it is. I'm not too stressed about it. Yeah, um, that, yeah that, that's be big. But uh, these tank item changes, I mm -hmm. think, are really, really, really big. Especially since this first item is one that I personally like using on a lot of different characters. Mm -hmm. Witchblade. They're yeah. making me sad a little bit because they're taking away the attack speed. But... They are adding physical protections, which it's, I mean, that's that's obviously great. Protections are always great. Increasing right. attack speed reduction aura. It makes it obviously more of a support item. This right here is probably going to be really exciting for our Ares mains. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's actually a it's actually a support item now, but right. it's also an aura item. So it's like, it's, it. so I, that's literally what I, first thing I thought about. I was like, oh, Ares actually likes this item now. I, I really, I, I, Witchblade to me was always, you never knew who the hell to use it on like it, it was kind of like that middle item like it didn't have enough protections to be tanky but it didn't have enough other benefits to like you know okay this is for sure a, a warrior item or whatever you know like it was always kind of in that weird place it was always meant to be a counter item i think yes because uh, like that's the only time i really ever built it was when i was trying to counter a team that was heavy on physical attack speed exactly that's attack speed. So it, it's just so yeah, it was it was real. It was real specific. Like it was real like scenario specific. I uh, I feel like now it like actually becomes a item that you can go. Ah, you know what? Like you know, let's use it. I always <laughs> I always pair Witchblade with Shogun's Kasari. So right. Perfect. You increase you increase your attack speed, decrease their attack speed, and that can give your guys an extra two or three hits before the other guys like them can hit twice. So. And then uh, Winged Blade uh, gives you a few more protections, takes some health off. So in one another one of those items where. It was specific, but now I feel like it's it's kind of going in the right direction. Um, Relic is going to give you a little bit more health and the crowd control. I use Relic in modes that you just want to spam, or you really want to have your cooldown, like the new uh, uh, the new arena mode where there's just the uh, pits everywhere. Like Relic is an almost must-have. Like things in that situation. Emperor's armor is another one that like real real specific situations that you want to use these on. And talisman of energy en and en talisman of energy. I think what they're doing with all these is just making them like, okay, we know this is for the tank role. We know what this is for. Let's just like, let's just make it, make it one of those items. And that's yeah, where they're making them more appealing, especially with the talisman. A lot of people didn't build it because I mean, how often are you actually going to get max stats on it? I mean, a lot of gods have to die in succession. You basically have to get a Dia side. Yeah. And once you get a Dia side, you don't need the stats anymore. Right. What do you care? <laughs> like, exactly. I, so, I think it makes it more viable. Like, it was a cool effect, but like you said, like, you got to stack it so fast. Like, yeah, you're not, it's not happening. Assassins are getting really assassin warrior. All the physicals are kind of getting a rework. Um, Jotun's is going from 40 to 50, which is, I, uh, there was always this weird place with Jotun's. That is going to kind of push me of like 50 power. That's significant. We're trying to draw people away from, uh, Crusher. Right. And Crusher's I almost like always the go, Crusher's Crusher. like the go, the Crusher's like the go-to for that tree. Right. But now Jotun's has got the extra power on it. So, well, I think they're going to try to make it so that Crusher is only going to be used for those, for those gods who really benefit from Crusher. Exactly. Like, like the passive effect on it and not just for the pure power. Exactly. Uh, the attack speed and the power usually outweigh the five difference of a 35 to 40 physical. I think it's 35 Crusher. Stone cutters, they're just taking some price off of it. I, I like that's another one of those items that's really nice on certain assassins, certain guys in general. But once again, um, this is where it gets interesting. Um, berserker it, they're taking protections off but they're increasing power because i think the reason they're doing this is because uh, berserker was kind of it, it didn't had it, <laughs> right it didn't have enough protections to like there were better options than berserker and now they're pushing it towards more of a unique like this specific god if you're an attack speed uh warrior 
Bologna, like you just said, like this is like now must have. Like this now makes sense. It, it fits in that niche. It was okay at both, and not really great at either. But now it's definitely more leans more into the attack speed and it, or attack speed, um, basic attack. Oh yeah, gods, assassins, uh, Bologna with attack speed builds. Yep. Because I mean, attack speed Bologna. Let's be honest. Like it's crazy. when it works, it's. It's, it's, insane. it's awful. <laughs> she swings faster than like uh, some assassins. Like she, she's nuts when attacks me. Bologna works. Uh, yeah, and Sal, another thing where they're going to be. I believe that if you want to be a more of a bruiser, more of a aggressive tank character, and you want to be more aggressive warrior, you want to be more aggressive anything, and you still want to have that little bit of protections, and you want, and you really like that that uh, this passive that this item has, they're just kind of giving you that option. Serrated Edge. I like I like this change to Serrated Edge. I, honestly, I'll be 100% honest. I didn't realize that the power was only basic attack power before. I did not either. Um, so it, I think it makes more sense just because the whole thing of its um, passive is for every you know ability on cooldown, you get an increase in, I thought it was an increase in power. Right. So it made it really good for like, like Susano, other ones that part of going in is basically you're dropping your whole kit right so um i, I think i like I, exactly and what uh what it what it also does is stack those abilities so you drop your first ability and then you get 10 power and then you drop your second ability and then you get 10 power and then you drop your third ability and you get 10 power and then your physical attack and the shit out of everybody i i think it's uh i, I think it's it's gonna it's just more it's it's just i think i like it better i yeah, I, I never I, realized I, it was I, just physical either i thought I it think, was I, yeah i think it it's just uh a common sense adjustment and so i think think they did good there no. i'm feeling good i'm feeling good on all those changes yep this uh, next one this next item is my favorite the celestial legion yes uh well celestial then helmet yeah yep. what you got oh it's just my favorite it's my favorite thing to counter with that's one of my favorite my go-to items whenever i'm going up against a really a really aggressive assassin or or adc who's picking on me when i'm a mage yeah i'll build that item because it gives me physical protections and i don't have but i don't have to sacrifice uh power item slot yep so and it, it gives it, it gives you both and you have more protections for the first hit because it stacks like however many protections on it over however many seconds exactly i think that <laughs> 70 just feels better 60 doesn't feel like a real you look at it and you're like well this isn't worth it and you immediately just kind of brush it off unless you're trying to counter now like you might use it in more of a situation where hey you're getting a little beat on but it's not too crazy uh but you know this might be the tipping point and that little extra power give you a, a nice little uh boom spear of desolation is to me that's a pretty nice change um your ultimate gets an eight second reduction on uh kills and assists and your regular cooldowns go down by two seconds uh, your regular abilities have a two second cooldown. So like to me, like like I I use Spirit Desolation on P on characters. I mean on most characters, but the what thought of to me is one of my mains is Zeus. Like I get assists and, and kills like crazy with Zeus. So if oh, yeah, I could just is... start spamming my ultimate as well with this, oh man. I, I honestly am thinking this is one of those this changes they're putting it out there. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets reworked on the next patch real quick. Yeah, I, depending on how it goes down. I I definitely could see that happening. I think it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> um, Obsidian Shard, a little bit of a boost. Uh, it, it, whenever it was between Obsidian Shard and uh and uh Karen's, Karen's coin, uh Chiron's coin, I always pick the coin. Just because the yeah, I mean it's so good movement speed yeah, pin yeah like the coin was always worth it to me um, now obsidian shard that little bit of a, a boost at least it makes it like a thought process like oh if I'm if I only use one ability cool let's run with that like uh, yeah I, I definitely think that that's at least now like now it's competitive now it's in the race I know you use polynomicon on everybody this is awesome <laughs> um, eighty five to ninety five I mean. Amir, that's huge that's amir 15. mains oh there's just so many gods that Ymir, like... when i want to be dumb ymir but i mean seriously gods that use a lot to be um soul yeah I mean, um so many. freya i like using it on um it's actually a really good item for morgan yeah oh yeah that's good because, because of the way her kit works is a lot of times after you do one of your abilities you're typically going to get at least one basic attack in before you hit the next one right because she doesn't have a lot of AOE. She's very, very focused in, in her ability. So if you can sneak up behind somebody, 
hit him with that that all three on that stun and then just smack him in the face with the basic attack that's like through for squish your character sometimes that's it yeah yeah that's polynomicon like that's i i like the, i always like the the i like the passive on it i the 85 always bugged me just because it's like i mean that's still a decent amount of power but 95 i mean that's the same amount that um that, 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 that's a big jump that's that's uh, yeah if, and especially you've if with 95 power you build that item first with yeah. the life still built into it that's huge yeah like you can jump you you can use that as a first item it's, it's uh speaking of the coin it just makes it just now like we know what heads and tails are different right as of right as of right now you, you just have to highlight over to see what the hell you have in each oh bump. yeah yeah uh the, they're talking about the new art on the ui right yeah, whenever you get yeah. the different heads yeah because they're both look the same yeah, like, wait like, which I, I have two and three which one is which yeah you don't know what the hell it is at least that's kind of different um soul reaver they're getting rid of the penetration on it but they're increasing the amount of the maximum strength of health damage to it yeah they're increasing the shred on it but removing the pin yeah i think that they're kind of putting this more of a um kind of like when it's between a kin size or executioner type of situation where do you are you trying to attack a health build or you're trying to attack a protection Protections build, build yeah. and like you know they're just kind of making it more of, of a unique Next item is my personal favorite of this whole thing, but I personally think this is broken. Uh, because the item itself is already insane. Arata Tahuti is getting 10% magical pin. They, if they, I would be shocked if this stays. <laughs> like, well, they did, they did it because they completely removed pin from Soul Reaver. I, I get it, but. Uh. I, I, no, I, I agree. <laughs> it's already a super strong item, but now I, I guarantee you with the added pin. Every single mage will be building right. I mean, why Everything. would you? This is going to be like Soul Reaver was a couple of patches back where... The only it, thing that would make it more stupid is they added 20% cooldown to it. Oh, it, it would be <laughs> the first item every mage would start with. But even right now, like, this is almost like... It's Tahuti t today is like that screw you item where it's like my build's now... Like, my build... Like, your build's coming online This is Tahuti. This is the, the, the item that I always hate to see on the Zeus that is going up against me. Once yeah. he builds right of Tahuti, you're it's like, rat. well... I mean, yeah, it's a wrap because if you get low and you see that little spinning shock around you, you're, you're just done. waiting for it. You're like, I'm dead. You're There's dead. nothing I can do. I'm at 30% health, but he's going to kill me right now. Yeah, you're done. We'll see. But whatever. Okay. Well, like like I said, I love it, but I would be shocked if that stays. Hey, you never know, though. Uh, do more. Is there taking some movement speed out of it? I don't. It needed it. I, I mean, yeah, it was pretty high already, but it was a stacking movement, so like... Yeah, but uh, honestly, the biggest reason that... I think the biggest reason to do this is uh, Raw. Oh, yeah. Raw, Raw, always, Raw always gets already gets stacking movement speed, and most Raws, as you see, will start off with Doom Orb, just because, I mean, early game, I mean, they are zipping around, and like it makes it really hard for assassins to think... Anchor. Think about all the times that, like, in Arena and stuff, that's been that raw who yeah. always gets away yeah and it's oh, because he's got do more and he's stacked all the movement speed and he's he's moving it he's moving it like 30 percent extra movement speed yep. same with uh uh poseidon like i always yes. get doom over poseidon same thing and i i, I, I stack do more on zeus too just because he's so he has no escape so it's kind of nice to have that little uh get that little run away from yeah, everybody but he, yeah so he already moves so slow that's just like helpful like with right raw, you raw, need raw, it Raw was already a drag racer. Now we just get, now we just shove Nos down his throat. Right. Um, Warriors items are getting a few adjustments. Uh, Shifter Shield. They're uh, increasing the protections on it, and they're increasing the protections gained when you're under 75% health. I think this is because Shifters is another one of those items that uh, it kind of got lost in. Is there a better option for me here? They're making it so no. There's like this actually makes sense for certain builds. Same thing with Frostbound. Uh, giving a little bit more power. It's another one of those items that, if you're trying to go for a slow build, it makes sense. Otherwise, there's just better options. Now, um, I mean, attack speed reduction and increased physical power. Like this is now like it's the same power as the Crusher. Like it, it, it makes kind of makes sense here again. The the Rune Forge, I think, is pretty big. The Rune Forge they increased the overall power on it, but they made it more health. But they buffed that damage on the crowd control. So to make up for that loss in power. So I think that they made it so that it's very specific, like only gods who are going to really benefit off that passive are going to build it now. Right. You're not just looking for that 50 power and 250 health. You're you're looking because you're a god that constantly CCs people. You know, you're you're constantly, you're, you're one of those gods. Like, uh, I mean, I'm 
I can't and even. Odin. Odin, yeah. Something Odin, Odin nature. hitting with the spear and then doing like the Raven Bomb. Right. Um, Sledge, I'm kind of glad they're doing this because Sledge is almost in every warrior build. I, I build it on every warrior. I'm not even going to lie. It's yeah. it, like the stacking protections were too good. It like it was. It had great health. It had good power. And you had decent protections on it that would stack and in a fight. Right. So it was like, why wouldn't you build it? It was almost, it was like a universal first item. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're kind of taking this away. Shields of Regrowth, uh, I'm sorry, all of you Hercules mains, because uh, your annoying ass is going to be a little bit slower. Take it off a little bit of that movement speed. Uh, yeah, there's a theme here. They're adding size to the Conquest map, and they're dropping everybody's movement speed. <laughs> uh, next, some Hunter's items. They're adding a new Hunter item, which is called Dominance, which if you look at the stats, you're not wrong. <laughs> It, uh, 55 power, 200 mana, 20 MP5, and a 10% penetration. Uh, this thing kind of smacks. Uh, this is, and then your basic attack also gets another 10% pin. Like, this is gonna hit. This is gonna hit really hard. This is almost like a, kind of a must-have for a lot of builds. Like, a lot, a lot. This is, this is kind of taking the place of Atalanta's bow, which we'll talk about next, is getting a big nerf. Um, this this thing is nice, and then Adelina's bow is getting that big that nerf, which decreases the penetration. So like lowers the pin, but they're also lowering the cost of it. So, right, right. I mean, I still see it going to be in a lot. I mean, with, even with the lowered pin, it had really good stats on it, and I mean now with the lowered gold, it's going to be easier to the you know you can get it faster. Yep. So yep. I mean, it's still a solid item with that passive, the increased movement speed on assists and kills. Yeah, and it's I mean it's it's really good, especially for chase. Right. Or for getting the heck out of dodge after you get the kill. Whenever, yeah. once, you, once you've once you killed the enemy hunter in the jungle and you see that assassin bearing down and you're like, deuces, I'm out. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the, the, I never really liked the power of Atalantis, but every other thing about the bow was like, it, it almost made it, if you're doing any kind of pin build, it's almost a must have. It's, it's a really, really nice build. But, you know, now you're going to have to go Dominance if you want to smack, and you're going to have to go Atalantis if you want that passive. If they're making it more, the passive is more important than anything else. Next thing, the Executioner is getting an additional stack. Yo, I'm going to be building this on everything. That, a 28% penetration or a reduction, like that's... That's nice. That's big. I don't feel like adding the stack is bad. No. Right? It doesn't overpower it because you're only rewarded with the stacks with hitting somebody. Right. You got to so hit So if you've made it to six stacks, you're already wearing this person out. I feel this is more to help overcome the tank. Like yeah. somebody who's trying to overcome a tank's protections. Right. That would be the person you actually get a six stack on. And then you're actually getting the benefit of that six stack every hit after that. We could talk about crit items as a whole because they added power to rage they're adding power to Deathbringer, which, by the way, really. But they added power to Deathbringer. They added power to all the stars. One thing they said about the stars, they added some kind of buff to all the stars because they kind of felt like the stars were getting overlooked. Um, personally, unless you needed, like, unless you were making a crit build and you wanted an anti-heal, you really didn't mess with the stars too, too much. Um, like, I like the idea of Poison Star, but everything about it is just better options there. I think that over, like overall, what they're doing is making crit builds a little more viable. Because my biggest issue with a crit build is you had to be, you had to build some type of stacking item early. You had to build something early to give you a big power buff, so that when you got into your crit builds, you actually did damage. Because all the crit build items were trash. Like none, that was all 20 hell, 20, 20, 30. Like you didn't have any real power behind a crit build. Now it, it opens up a lot of things you can do because you are getting also you are also getting power from your crit items uh, at least enough to make a difference to me. Yeah, I started experimenting with um, the fail me not. Yes, I use it a yeah. lot. Yeah, the fail me yeah, but that's a crit item. So I would usually build that, and if I built fail me not, I'd skip rage and go into Deathbringer. Right. So I, get my, I get the so you get the cooldown, you get the power, you get the passive on on an ult, but you get that Deathbringer increase in your crits. Right. Um, but I, yeah, I would only build the star, like the the purple star. The I can't even wind remember demon. the name of it. Wind demon, I'm no, sure. No, wind, wind demon is the attack speed one. I'm talking about the anti heal one. Oh yeah, the, uh, the um, shadow steel. Yeah, oh, sh shadow, shadow shadow steel uh, shuriken. Right, but like but that was your anti heal item. There was no reason to build it beyond that. Exactly. There was better crit items. There was rage. There was deathbringer. And I mean, like and you can't you can't just once you get a certain amount of crit, there's no 
need to build more crit. So it's like you'd want stuff like attack speed and you'd want movement speed. And yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll see a resurgence in crit builds. I build a lot of crit builds, but you have to like be so. I mean, you have to put like a big hit, a heavy hitting item early in order for you. You have to put something that has, you know, 50 to 75 power early. Otherwise, yeah, like, it's like with, with like crit builds without transcendence just didn't feel like they hit hard enough. Right. Otherwise, your your third item, I mean, like I like to always like to build a bow as third item. None of the bows really had enough smack unless I put something like, you know, uh, like, like, tra like you said, transcended something early that made it hit harder. What, from what everything that we just talked about, uh, all the magical item adjustments, um, the the way the healing is changing, all of the relics, the starter items, I really, really think that this season, what they're trying to make you do is make a decision on your build. You can't just put a bunch of random crap in your build. You know, I'm a, I'm a penetration, but I'm also a, a crit, and I'm also attack speed, and I'm also a little bit of lifesteal. Like, no. You, if you want to maximize your build, you're going to go, I am building crit attack. I am building crit. I am building pin attack speed. You know what I mean? Like, they're making all these items. You have to actually think about your build. If you want to be an aggressive player, you have to build aggressive items. If you want to be a defensive player, then you have to build. You know what I mean? Like, they're making you, they're forcing you to think more in the game. And I yeah, am it, here it for definitely it. has felt, I'd say, the past year or so, it definitely has felt, I will say, I didn't really feel like it mattered what I built right like, exactly like, it, like to a degree it did like if i want to cool down i need to build cool down right but beyond that it'd be like it didn't matter if i built power it didn't matter like because i was like because i felt at the end of the game i was hitting about the same no matter what i threw in there um a couple of god balances nothing really too major here uh yanus uh, is getting where you can hit people when they're falling through the portal rather than waiting for them to come down so that's that's something interesting it's gonna make him better it definitely improves his power like it he doesn't have to just stand there but and wait. But times have you been attacking somebody in Janus portals? I mean, you whiff. Right. <laughs> that's so annoying. Right. You're like, you're like, damn it, Janus. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> ain't wrong. Ain't like, wrong. My name's Janus. It's Janus right now. <laughs> <laughs> Through space and time, his ultimate is getting a, a buff. It can deal up to, now it can only ever deal up to 75% of the target's max health. So you, I guess it can't one shot. Cool. If they're full health, yeah, if they're full health, it can't one shot. Right. Um, but if they're below seventy five percent health, you can hit them at full power. Yeah, there's nothing too much. Bakasora is getting a little bit of a nerf. Uh, movement speed's going down, which uh, Bakasora chasing you with that ultimate is death. Silly. One on one. Silly. Just silly. Uh, uh, raw movement speed stacks going down. He's decreasing his speed. There's a theme here. We're gonna keep saying it. Uh, Poseidon. Wonder, what, wonder what's going down there. Oh, it's movement speed. That's crazy. It's movement speed. Uh, Agni, um, his basic attack now provides two stacks uh, for his uh, burn. That's yeah. really good. That's, that's really good. That's re uh, that's only on god hits. Yeah, god hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because in, in a team fight, I mean, to sit there, you have to hit like four or five basic attacks before he, you build his passive back up. And that's just, I mean, that makes him, that gives him a little bit more, be the, to be a little bit more competitive in conquest. They, they, Agony's probably seen a drop in competitive play, and they're trying to bring him back in. Right. Um, Chernabog, they're increasing his attack speed for his Vicious Barrage. I feel like Chernabog's strong as hell, but that's just, hey, let's keep stacking it. Let's go, baby. Chiron is getting, uh, getting a big healing buff. Getting a healing passive. buff. Right. Oh, yeah. That follows the theme of the heals. They're giving a little bit of a, a little bit more heal. They, they, all the gods that you see right now that are really high movement speed, they're trying to pull back down. And all the gods were healing that have any type of heal ability. They're trying to bring up in my like you know trying to balance. Kronos is getting a increase in his attack speed. I don't do not like Kronos at all in my just because <laughs> I, it's just like I don't feel like he's great at anything. Like his ultimate is annoying as crap for to kill. Uh, but like he's he's an ADC right? But like if you're gonna go ADC, like there's just better ADC mages. Like, well, it's well it's. Well, I mean, you think Kronos was the original ADC mage. Right. And I, yeah, I so, they just kept so putting out better ones, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, well, I mean, Kronos, I mean, I've seen some people who are really good with Kronos. But oh, the yeah. One thing, the one thing I've always noticed about Kronos, right? Number one, he's got really good crowd control. Yeah. Like, he can hit the whole enemy team with that freaking stop time ability. Yep. And, like, just like if he can hit everybody clumped up and then follow it up with that other ability, he can wreck space. Yep. But, it, like, all ADCs he's a late game trigger right until he starts getting the items to build up the that damage right he's ne he's never been much of a threat i just like i, I think they're, they're trying to bring him in now i think by increasing his attack speed he's trying to make him 
more competitive. And don't get me wrong. Okay. I've got wrecked by some Kronos. I'm not saying Kronos is a bad guy. What I'm saying is, like, if you're going to pick a mage ADC, like Oleron, Freya, there's just some oh. ADCs out there that just, like, it's Kronos doesn't have that same stopping power. Uh, I feel like with an attack, that that they doubled his attack speed per level. That that dude's going to be swinging <laughs> by the end of this. Uh, like, that dude is going to be, sw- like, he's going to be, like, Cupid level swinging by the end of his build at 1.5. That's, because he already went fast. That That's that's pretty significant. Danzaburo. Get a nerf. That's he's getting a, a nerf. Honestly, I think he's fine as is. Really, the only annoying thing about him is that damn, uh, that is his bag where he will uh, aggro you and uh, taunt you or whatever. Like, I don't know. I thought I thought this was the closest to releasing a god at a good place that I've ever seen Smite do. Like, he wasn't too strong. He wasn't too weak. Yeah, on, on the uh, the taunt thing, though, I mean, that only works if they place it really well because this is a slow release on it. It's oh, not yeah. instant. So. Oh, yeah. You got to be – you can't be bad with Danza. But, like, but you gotta man, if you get caught by it, oh, bye. It's, so, and when he throws in the middle of a team fight and the whole team, like, it's so annoying. It's such a frustrating. Uh, Fenrir. Was they that? want Fenrir. No, no, I just said Fenrir. I said, looks like they want Fenrir back in the game. Oh, man. But again, what they say is that they make him, they, he's, a, he's kind of an aggressive support player or like a, a bruiser jungler right now. They kind of, he's kind of a niche role. I feel like Fenrir is in a good place. Like, he's strong, but they're like not playing anymore. They're like, no, Fenrir is going to be the tear you apart assassin like he should be uh you get two so they're increasing his piling is is, uh his power scaling on his unchained they're increasing you get automatically get two runes for his passive from the seething howl and they're increasing the aoe damage from his brutalize from 50 percent of damage to 60 percent of damage like they're giving him a significant power jump like he's gonna be He's gonna like, shred. He's gonna yeah. shred, and he already in he already shreds. Like I can't tell you how many times I've been killed by a Fenrir who built like one freaking attack item, and then like two, me- uh, well, uh, an attack item, a kind of a middle ground, and then a defensive item, and then like this is real early game, and he can already shred you. Like he's yeah. gonna hit uh, Hachiman. Just getting a decrease on his one. Yeah, not anything to be too crazy here. Uh, Hercules is getting an increase on his Earth Shatter which great okay <laughs> Look, they're trying to do a balance here on izanami basically with her attack speed animation yeah making it so that you can actually she's not going to send out another a projectile to the other one returns yeah it's not changing it well it means you're not getting her, hit four her, times her, proje- her projectile speeds act should start more closely match what her actual attack speed is yeah merlin's getting a bit of a nerf kind of his, but on his frost bolt on his frost bolt but then they're increasing that, well, I don't know. Radiant, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see. They decreased the time to 0.25 ticks. So, so they halved your time. time for your tick damage. and they, But they then they decreased the power. So, like, I don't know, like... Uh, yeah, I think it's going to it's gonna tick harder but for shorter. Yeah, like, I'm kind of curious to see how this works. Nija, he's, she's going to change her heels. Once again, this follows they're, the they're, they're trying to break Nijaws. I had seen decrease in play. They're trying to figure out how to make them competitive again with the current meta. So um, just doing some. I do like the fact that our Millery Sash can no longer crit. Yeah. Yeah. No joke, right? <laughs> but they increased the damage on it and they increased the scaling on it. So it's going to hit really the freaking same. hard. But, About the yeah, same. But it just won't be able to crit. Increase the beads. Now, this is nice. They increase your beads window on the fi- on the fire wheels. So you be able to beat out of his ultimate. Yeah, you very rarely can hit that. That's like almost like hitting get beating out of uh Heim Dillier. Uh, yeah, Heim Dollar or uh or the the mage, uh what's the assassin mage? Um What's he do? Dragon. She's jumping a dragon, bro. Assassin Mage. Oh, um, Aquang. Aquang. Uh, like, like that's the only, and, and Aquang is easier to beat out because at least it's a freaking, like, symbol on your chest. With her, you just die. Uh, Raijin getting a little bit of a, a buff, getting some cooldown reductions. The cooldown reduction, decrease cooldown on that, and then getting the Thunder Crash. And then increase. Rama, that's a hot fix. That's just a fix. Nothing. Uh, and Souls get an increase. Um, attack speed. Increase attack speed on unstable manifestation by 0.2%. So we'll max out at 30%. And then a stronger for her burst. burst. Oh, 
that's gonna hurt yep that already hurts these are nothing not, not a whole lot of major changes here a couple of things that if you're that if you play that god a lot but otherwise i don't think anybody's gonna be broken just some kind of wrap up stuff uh they have announced that there will be six gods coming out this season uh tiamat is coming at 8.2 launch gilgamesh is coming 8.4 launch um there will be four other gods 8.6 8.8 .8, 810, 812. Uh, so basically, we have um, until February. TMI's gonna come out in February, and then everybody else, you know, however many weeks in that order. Um, there's gonna be a couple reworks in the works, no pun intended. Persephone is getting a rework. I'm really interested in this because I'm not a big like I Persephone is kind of an ambush god. I know Randy, you play her, you like her. Um, <laughs> I just feel like she's just like she so much of, freaking work involved in order to getting this kill. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the thing with Persephone is if you can catch her by surprise, she's dead. Right. If you get on but her, it's done. But yeah, but if Persephone sees you coming, right? She got. She got you. She got you because she's got all her flowers around <clears throat> and do what I do. I usually leave a small clump of the flowers over the side. And when somebody chases me, I run the flowers and then I leap away. Right. Trigger all the flowers at once and. I, and at the very least, you make that other person go, nope, and run and, and avoid the flowers so they don't take a whole bunch of damage. But not to mention that ultimate, bro. The yeah. ultimate. Like, I have shot that thing across maps and hit people in their freaking fountains with it. That, that's it, the best thing about Persephone is that freaking ultimate. It's and silly. So I'm but, really curious. I really like when they do reworks. I mean, I I think that the Loki rework was really cool. Um, I'm curious to see what they do. Persephone, as well as Bastet, is another I'm, one. I'm just, I'm really surprised that Bastet's getting another rework. They must, must have really not been happy with how she turned out. I mean, I thought that her new ultimate wasn't too bad. Yeah, she's getting a new passive and a new ultimate. So overall, I mean, her ultimate's all right. You, they have to be set up for it, and it's just not like I don't know. I, I think yeah. they could. I definitely think they could do better. So I'm really glad yeah. they are. Well, yeah, well, because the whole thing with her ultimate is with most assassins, like the ultimate itself does damage. Right. Hers just buffs her already. So the whole thing with, uh, with, especially trying to get in a team fight is you have to sit there, you have to pop your ultimate, and you have to jump in, you have to start doing things. Right. Whereas uh, it'd be nice if you could do like shoot off the ultimate, like to stun them or get some initial damage in, and then start working on them. Hmm. That's what I, that's what I hope to see from it. Item reworks coming on the way. Yeah, Mail uh, renewal, stone of foul. Eh, you know, God Sobek's getting a new God model. Yep, new God About model. Time, for Sobek. Derpy looking, that derpy looking crocodile. It's time to go. <laughs> and then uh, uh, upcoming skins: Cerberus getting a new skin, Baron, Kuzimbo, Serket, Erlang, Kali, Vamana, Zonkwi, and Thoth. What's the last? No, oh, Thoth has gotten skins. What's the last? Which one of these well, guys? He, he doesn't. He doesn't get very many. Yeah, I was. Saying, I haven't seen a Thoth, a Thoth skin in a a long time but uh, uh yeah sylvanas and chronos chronos hasn't gotten a skin in a while so that's nice yeah and then there but these are planned so we'll see what happens you know this uh, is planned but not started but likely happening yeah uh, we get new game modes yep overall another map i mean and then there's some hot fixes that are still the pts uh balances we'll we'll get into that when we come to the items but overall i i like like i guess like we said earlier i really think that this is going to be kind of a new game um i think that it's going to be more for the for the veterans, there's more tactics involved. There's more uh, thinking, planning in your build. You can get in your god builder and actually, like, okay, I don't have this build. I want to do this build. If I want to do that. For the new people, there is all kinds of changes that will kind of teach you how to play the game. Will kind of help you out with that. Will make things a little easier. A lot of quality of life here. There are a lot of uh, of item changes and god changes that are coming that are going to make things very, very interesting. Um, there, the map changes, the new gods all of this it is gonna be a great time i cannot personally wait yeah i'm excited i don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited about all this i mean we only got a couple days so uh, yeah i'm excited i mean i'm cautiously optimistic yes i i, I mean I, on paper it looks really good but as always you know once it actually comes out we'll see how it plays out but i'm hoping that it does what they're hoping it does right i especially the healing thing i'm really excited about the healing thing because i think that's really really going to change how that's going to have the biggest effect on the game to me right it's it's because there's no way for people to fall back uh, game game modes like assault that's what i was saying one of my favorite game modes is assault mm -hmm. it's always really frustrating when the other team has a healer and you don't because they just heal so much so right i'm hoping maybe 
stuff like just a simple change like that maybe that helps offset that a little bit and make it make game like assault and stuff a little bit more fun yep i agree there that being said taking up enough of your time randy we're gonna be Coming out with another video that we record later. It will come out very shortly after the release of this one. As of right now, this is like as the recording as of the recording of this video, everything that we said is factual. Um, but like you never know, the patch hasn't come out yet. So um, I'm really excited. We'll have one whenever we never we get full details on Tiamat. Um, she comes out next month. Uh, when we get details on her, we gonna we'll have something about that. So y'all stick around for that. Um, once again, be sure to check us out. Uh, Randy is at facebook.gg slash the Randalorian. He streams almost every day except for Monday. I'm at facebook.gg slash Phil Chills. Uh, I stream pretty much every day. I usually have one or two days off a week. Uh, come hang out with us. Um, and thanks for hanging out for the video. Y'all have a good one.